first and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Yahweh, being the name of the Heavenly Father, Bahashim, meaning in the name of Yahweh Shai, being the name of Yahweh's only begotten Son and our Lord and Savior, also who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahashim Rakakwadash, meaning in the name of the Holy Spirit, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the old elect that scattered abroad to the four corners of the earth, which are your so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, and Shalom to your speckled birds and your Israelite foreigners that scattered out in other nations that look like the other nations but are in fact Israelites. And the topic of this lesson is going to be on, you know, just being content, you know, being content with what you have, all right? You know, and according to the scriptures, that's the spirit, you know, that we have to be in, all right? You know, we have to be content with the light that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has given us, you know? And, you know, the spirit was pretty much put on my, put on me, you know, to do this lesson because majority, you know, of you Jakes, you know, you Israelites, so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, you know, you're not content, you know, with what you have, all right? You, you want to strive to be rich, you know, you want to strive to, you know, get more, all right? You want more, you want more, you know? And that's not really, according to the scriptures, the spirit that we are supposed to be in, all right? You know, we're supposed to be content, you know, with what we have, you know? So, uh, yeah, through the spirit, you know, I just wanted to bring out a few precepts on this, you know? This lesson shouldn't be too long at all. So, first scripture I want to bring out is uh, Proverbs chapter 30. And we're going to start at verse 7. And it says, Two things have I required of thee, deny me them not before I die. Verse 8, Remove from me, Salaki, remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. All right, so... That's the mindset that we should have. You know, we want vanity to be removed far from us. All right. And also, you know, we don't want to have poverty nor riches either. You know, we, we want to have that middle ground. All right. Let's continue. Feed me with food convenient for me. Verse nine, lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my power in vain all right so you want to have that middle ground because if you're rich and we see that today you know when people are full you know they're rich they're wealthy you know they forget about you how about shimmy i was shy all right they deny the lord you know because they think they got it all already so they don't really need the lord you know and if you're poor you know that could ultimately lead you to stealing and so on and so forth you know so you want to have that middle ground you know you want to be you want to have you know that things that are just you want the lord to give you you know what's convenient for you all right you know you want to be content all right so um i want to get first timothy chapter six now and let's start at um let's start at verse six all right and it says but godliness with contentment is great gain for we, verse 7, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can't carry nothing out. Verse 8, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content, all right? So, you know, it's important that, you know, we be content, you know, with what we have, you know, because we don't, we, we, we've we brought nothing into this world and we carry nothing out. So we have to be content with, you know, what we have, all right? You know, if we just have food and raiment, meaning clothes, hey, be content with that. You know, be content with what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is giving you. You know, verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. All right. So it's important, you know, uh, to just be content, you know, with what you have. You know, many of you Jakes are, you know, laboring, you know, and striving to be wealthy or rich in this side. All right. You know, and the scriptures tell you not that you shouldn't even labor to be rich. All right. You know, you need to be just content with what you have, you know, because when you're rich, you know, you're exposed to many different lusts, you know, your different opportunities open up for you, you know. So when you're just content with what you have, you know, that's a better place to be in. All right. You know, so uh, let's go to Proverbs chapter 23.
and this is a uh, pretty much gonna go into what I just said, you know. So this is Proverbs chapter twenty three and verse four, and it says, "Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom." All right. So you know you're not even supposed to be uh laboring to be rich, all right? Because as we already read, you know you're supposed to be content with what you have, all right? You know even if it's just food and raiment, you know, meaning clothes, you know. So let's get Hebrews chapter thirteen. And let's read verse five. All right. And it says, let your conversations be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. All right. Because a lot of times when you're not content with what you have, you're you're coveting what the next person got. All right. And that's within the law to not be covet to be covetous. All right. You know. Because being covetous, that could lead to a lot of other sins as well, you know. So um, let's finish out this verse right quick and I'm going to get that scripture. So uh, for he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. All right. So, yeah, you know, it's within the law that we're not supposed to covet, you know. So let's get Exodus chapter 20. In verse 17, all right, and it says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, all right, because ultimately, when you covet your neighbor's wife, that leads to adultery, you know, and that's that's off, nor his ser nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's, all right, so you know, when you're not content with what you have. You know, you begin to covet what the next person got, all right? And that's extremely dangerous because that could lead to other sins, you know? But just coveting within itself is a sin, all right? So let's go ahead and see what this word covet actually means, all right? Let's see what covetousness uh, actually means. So this is covetousness. I'm probably pronouncing the word wrong. I always pronounce it wrong, but you get what I'm saying. Um... It says the feeling of having a strong desire for the things that other people have. All right. So you're not supposed to covet after what the next person have. You know, you're not supposed to be having strong desires of what the next post person got. All right. You know, you're supposed to be content with what you have. You know, be content with what Yahweh Bashim Shai has given you. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and go back to the scriptures. And, um, Let's get Mark chapter 7. All right, because it's going to go into how being uh, coveting, you know, how coveting, you know, is pretty much considered evil. All right. So this is Mark chapter 7. And uh, let's start at verse 20. And it says, and he said, that which cometh out of a man that defileth the man verse 21 from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts adulteries fornication murders thefts covetousness wickedness deceit lasciviousness an evil eye blasphemy pride foolishness all these evil things come from within and defile it the man all right but point being you know covetousness you know it was mentioned you know and it says all these evil things come from within a man and defile it the man all right so being covered coveting you know is evil all right and a lot of times as i already said when you're not content with what you have that leads to you coveting you know what the next person has all right you know so it's important to just be content with what you have you know, and uh, a lot of times, you know, certain things are just not profitable for you to have. All right. You know, as I already said, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know, he pretty much put us in the light that we are meant to be in. All right. You know, for example, certain brothers, you know, uh, want wives. All right. Certain brothers want multiple wives, you know, and that's lawful according to the scriptures. But 
you know, on this side, you know, it's not a wise thing, you know, because ultimately that could distract you from where your mind really needs to be at. And that's on this ministry, you know, this word. All right. You know, dealing with one wife alone could distract you. So how much more than multiple wives? All right. You know, so it's not in everybody's It's not certain. Your light is different from the next person's light. All right. You know, you're not supposed sometimes you're not meant to have what the next person has. You know, and that's just how you how about Shimia was shot set it up. So let's go ahead and get into that. Let's uh, get Ecclesiastes chapter 37. And uh, let's read verse, let's start at verse 28. All right. And it says, For all the things, Salaki, for all things are not profitable for all men neither hath every soul pleasure in everything all right so everything is not profitable for all men all right you know maybe one brother got this or got that but the but you don't you know maybe it's not profitable for you to have it because you know it could ultimately be a distraction for you all right you know everybody has a lot that's that they're supposed to be in you know so again they leads back to you know what this whole lesson is about being content with what you have all right verse uh 29 and it says be not unsatiable in ev in any dainty thing nor too greedy upon meats all right you know so we're not suppo supposed to you know be too greedy you know and that goes pretty much for anything you know we're not to be too we're not supposed to be too greedy you know you know everything is not you know profitable for us all right so therefore you know we're supposed to be you know, content with what we already have. So, uh, I'm gonna bring out two more scriptures. You know, I'm gonna close this lesson out. All right. You know, this was just a quick lesson, you know, uh, going into this topic, you know, because this topic really doesn't get touched too often. So I just want to touch on it a little bit. So, um, I want to get Philippians chapter four. And uh, let's start at verse 11, all right? And it says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content, all right? So whatever state that you're in, you know, whatever you have, all right? You know, whatever lot that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh put you in, you know, your mindset, it should be to be content with that, all right? Verse 12. I know both how to be abased and I know how to be how to abound everywhere and all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. All right. So, you know, we have to be content with whatever light that we are placed in. All right. You know, we, we ain't supposed to covet, you know, so on and so forth. You know, as we read in, um, and also, as we read in Ecclesiastes chapter 37, you know, all things are not profitable for all men. All right. You know, in the example that I gave, you know, uh, some brothers want wives, you know, uh, some brothers want multiple wives, you know, but that's not really profitable, you know, right now, you know, because dealing with one wife alone is could be a distraction, you know. So, yeah, you know, having multiple wives is lawful. You know, men can have that, but it's not profitable right now because we have more important things to worry about, you know. So certain brothers are placed in different lots than other brothers, you know, and we are in the lot that we're supposed to be in. So we're supposed to be content with that, you know. So Lord willing, you know, this quick lesson was edifying to you brothers and you sisters as well. And uh, as always, I want to give all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh. Bahashem Yawashai, Bahashem Rachakwadash, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and Shalom to you brothers that's out there pushing this truth and sincerity. Shalom.